Not long ago, I reviewed DJ Hack Pure, an ultra compact case with an internal brick that could handle very light components. It was great for productivity, just an all around good case if you're looking for something that didn't need a dedicated GPU. Now, JHack has come out with an MK2 version, a slightly larger case that has support for a dedicated GPU in the same compact form factor. So today we're gonna do a build in the smallest ITX gaming case in the world. So here we have the JHack Pure MK2 version. Now we looked at its smaller brother not too long ago. The biggest difference here is that it's a bit longer and it can now house a low profile GPU. So up front, very simple. All you have is a simple cutout here for your 16 millimeter power plug or power switch, the Vandal switch. Both sides are pretty much the same. Ventilation pattern there, which matches the ventilation on the top. The top is pretty much entirely ventilation, so you should be able to get a decent amount of air into the case to cool whatever you need it to. Underneath, things get a little more interesting. You now, instead of having an all flat metal bottom, you have the addition of this ventilation here that sits underneath your GPU. So in addition to having a GPU, you could also mount a power supply there, their 200 watt Meanwell unit, or some SSDs or additional fans if you wanna add some more cooling to the system. And around back, you can see simply cut out for your IO. You have two different ports here for power plugs, depending on what kind of DC-DC, AC-DC, um, internal or external power supply unit you go with, and then dual slots for that low profile GPU. So there is a decent amount of room for flexibility as much as po would be possible in a case like this. The design and layout is very simple, matte black, like I like it, nice and simple. You can blend it into pretty much any decor. I think it's really attractive overall and understated and simple in its layout. So let's open it up now and see how the internals look. Getting into the case is simple. There are four screws at the top and then two on each side, so six total. You have your four mounting posts for your motherboard, as well as this bay here, which can either be ventilation for a GPU, your case, or a spot to mount fans. And additionally, you have these two mounting points here, these two screw holes. That's where you can mount your internal Meanwell JHack power supply, the 200 watt version that we used for the original JHack Pure if you want. But for our purposes, we're gonna definitely be putting a GPU in here and make a nice compact gaming rig. Accessorized, there's not much that comes with the case. You will get the included vandal switch or power button. This riser cable for graphics card is optional. It was, I believe it was only like 25 bucks though as an add-on piece. And additionally, you'll get some feet there for the bottom. You don't need really high feet since there is some space in between the GPU and the bottom of the case. We'll talk about that later. And mounting screws, which you'll need just for mounting your motherboard, GPU, and just general things inside the case. So everything you would need to get started can be ordered directly from the JHack site. It may be difficult on camera for you to realize how small this case actually is. So for scale, let's put it up next to some of the more popular iTakes cases right now. You can see it's a baby. It's a tiny, tiny case in comparison. It really is impressive that you can fit a dedicated GPU into something that small. All right, so let's jump into the actual build. For components going inside here, you have to be pretty purposeful about what you pick. But I went for a nice mid-range system that should be able to handle gaming, editing, pretty much whatever you want to do as long as you're not going crazy. So for the CPU, I have the Ryzen 5 3600X, a great all-around performer, great for games, and also can handle some rendering or editing duties if that's what you wanted to do. I'm gonna cool that with the Noctua NHL9i, the Chrome Max Edition, so that's the nice all matte black version that should look amazing inside this case. My motherboard is the Aorus X570i. This is probably a bit overkill for this build, but it's a great motherboard that should be able to handle what we have in here and also more if we wanna add something else down the line. For RAM, I have 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4-3200, great RAM that I pretty much use in every build that I do. Um, for storage, not gonna go with NVMe, I'm gonna keep the cost down. I have a one terabyte Samsung 860 Evo, so it should be able to hold games, give you typical SSD SATA speeds, uh, that should be fine for this system. And lastly, the GPU, the star of this show, will be the low profile GTX 1650. So you should be able to handle 1080p gaming across pretty much anything at 60 frames for most games, especially esports titles. If you wanna play you know, high-end AAA titles, some of those might not run as well, obviously, but 
If you are a eSport gamer or someone that plays first person shooters, a lot of those games should run just fine on this system, but let's assemble it and see how it works. Before we get started, I just wanted to touch quickly on the power supply options you have. Using one of these will be your best option. So on the right, we have a Pico 160 XT. Um, this is very popular and one of the cheaper options as well. Again, all these re rely on external power bricks. Then we have the HG Plex 160. This is an older model. Um, the new one has a silver faceplate, uh, but this is a great option as well. If you're looking to just do a 19 volt brick, this is fantastic. On the left, we have a custom GPU. This is a G Unique power supply. I've done a video on this and also this one. And this one, this is a custom GPU that you can order through smallphonefactor.net. I'll link to that form thread there. Um, but these can go upwards of 400 plus watts. Definitely overkill for a build like this, but I'm gonna use it anyway just to make sure we have the headroom. The HD Plex 160 is probably my general recommendation if you're looking for an ultra compact power supply that works with a variety of bricks. You can pick up a bunch of bricks. Most of them on Amazon can be found for as little as 30 bucks. So it's a pretty good package. Uh, but if you have the money to swing it and you need more power, G Unique is a great option as well. One more quick note before we get started. The NHL9i, the core that, that was designed for Intel motherboards, this will fit onto AMD motherboards, but the L9A version does not fit onto Intel motherboards. So you can use this cooler. I'm using this because it's nice and black but you will need the conversion kit that Noctua provides. So you can see the bottom, the feet pattern or the actual mounting point pattern is basically a square and on AMD motherboards, it is a rectangle. So you have to get the mounting kit or the additional bracket kit and that will let you put these feet onto this cooler. I'm just gonna swap these out since obviously I have both coolers, but there is also a Chromex version of the NHL 9A, the AMD version, it just wasn't out when I purchased this. So just keep that in mind. Don't buy this cooler thinking you're just gonna throw it onto an AMD motherboard and it will work perfectly. Make sure you either get the AMD version or you get the conversion kit. Okay, so we have everything assembled. This was pretty easy to build and obviously not a ton of components. There are some interesting things that happen though. Um, for one, my actual Archdemon power supply is kind of bumping into the power switch up front. You can see that there, it's very tight. So you might wanna be careful about which power supplies you do or don't use. If I had gone with an HD Plex, this probably would be an even bigger problem because it has a heat sink. Some other boards move the 24 pin down a bit. That would probably make for a much better fit. So that's something that you normally wouldn't even be thinking about, but in a tight case like this, it can really be helpful. The power supply cables, this one specifically has more cables than I need. The HD Plex is modular. You can add and remove cables that you don't need. So it would be a lot easier to route this. It would be a lot cleaner for sure, but you can see underneath the power supply, there are the, or underneath the graphics card, there are the power supply cables sitting in there, or you can see them even better underneath the bottom there. So that's kind of where they live. This riser here is interesting. So you can see there's a decent piece sticking out there. I suppose you could flip that either way. I figured it made more sense to pop it out this direction, but it would be nice if there was just a fixed riser, honestly, instead of this flexible cable that you have to really kind of bend a lot to get it to fit into that tight compact space. So let's get the top on, see how that works out.
So after a pretty straightforward and simple build, I now have everything set up and assembled, got all my games and testing software installed on it, and I slid into doing some tests. First up, I took a listen to the acoustics, both at idle and gaming. I thought this was gonna be crazy loud, but the results actually surprised me. So as you heard, this system under gaming load is not really loud at all, which was really impressive and what most of you will probably be using a case like this for. I was truly impressed by the acoustics. I thought the 1650 would be crazy loud and it wasn't, so that's something good to know. And obviously the CPU while gaming isn't stressed super crazy hard, so you should be able to keep acoustics in check as well as temps. Speaking of temps, the case does an adequate job of dealing with heat. My CPU was sitting at around 45 degrees C idle, which is definitely higher than you would normally expect. But keep in mind, this is a six core, 12 thread CPU at 4.3 gigahertz in an ultra compact system with one 92 millimeter fan coming down on a tiny heat sink. So that's totally fine. But more importantly, when gaming, it was only touching the 65 to 70 C mark. So it was never going above that really. And it was totally under control in terms of temperatures while doing actual active tasks. Just that idle temp is gonna be a little higher than you're normally expected. The GPU seemed to have a much easier time. At idle, it was sitting at around 49 degrees C, very comfortable for a typical GPU. And under load, it was touching the 75 to 80 degree mark. What you would typically see from a compact desktop card, obviously not super, super low in terms of temps, but certainly reasonable. I wasn't seeing any throttling, even with super intensive games pushing it to its max. So the case can cool itself, it does get a bit heat soaked at times, so you will feel the temperature on the outside physically of the case rising, but it didn't seem like that was actually affecting the performance. Those temperatures never spiked to a point that was dangerous or at risk of throttling for the GPU or of hitting its thermal peak for the CPU. So the temperatures are fine, the acoustics are really good, but what about actual performance? So far I've tested about six games on this system and every game that I've tested has been able to hit 60 frames per second at 1080p with either medium, high, or ultra settings. Some games like Overwatch were even able to go 2560 by 1080, Apex as well, and still maintain that 60 frame per second threshold. So it's pretty powerful in terms of what you can do. This is a very capable gaming machine. Unless you're looking to do 4K, obviously, this isn't gonna even come close to touching that. But for you 1080p esports gamers, people that play League of Legends, games like that, lighter games, this is gonna be a fantastic system and it's gonna stay quiet. That's the big difference. If you wanna dive into a little more detail on the benchmarks, I threw all of that data onto the article on the website. So you can check that stuff out there if you're interested. When I originally got this case, I thought, oh, that's cute, it's compact, it'll be fun, do a nice productivity build. But now that I've actually built in it, tested it, and used it, I'm starting to think that it's more than that. It's definitely more than that. It can handle an actual gaming load. It can handle productivity, really whatever you need to do, as long as you're not looking for crazy powerful components. At 3.1 liters, it is easily the most compact ITX gaming case on the market. And if you're looking for that compact size, this is a great option. It's such a simple design that there really weren't any issues there. Everything was very well thought out, particularly the power plug options. That's something that a lot of case manufacturers overlook, especially when you're dealing with these ultra compact systems with custom DC-DC or AC-DC power supply. This case is priced at around 90 bucks with the power button. I think that that is right in line with where it should be. All metal, nice powder finish, made in the USA. That's a pretty healthy and reasonable price for what you're getting. If you want to pick one up for yourself or any of the other components you saw in the video today, I will drop links in the description along with a link to the article where you can see more benchmarks, full benchmarks and performance data if that will help you make a buying decision. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video. I'm Jay. I'll see you next time.